Kelly and Wrighty, match week three, as we will be saying all the way through, we'll finish with Arsenal at the top of the Premier League after a perfect start to the season. Beating Bournemouth means Arsenal have won their opening three games for the first time since 2004. It's all looking pretty good right now. Can't lie. <laughs> type of high-profile fixture Bournemouth had starkly missed as Arsenal tried to protect their own 100% record. Good strength from Jesus getting the better of Sanessi and he's got away from Lerma as well and still he goes Jesus. It's brilliant from Gabriel Jesus and there's an end product as Erdogan taps it in but all the plaudits go to Gabriel Jesus. Saka finding Ben White. Erdogan again and the same result. 2-0. Lerma's missed his header. Shaka playing it back. Oh, it's a stunning goal from Saliba. A quite brilliant finish from a centre-half. The cherries chasing, but Arsenal's 100% record is maintained. Bournemouth nil, Arsenal three. Do you want a little minute? <laughs> Everybody's doing this, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just happy that the team's doing well. I'm not getting Are you going to win the league? No, no, no. I just want us to... Are you going to challenge? You know what it is? Just want a performance. <laughs> me, and, me, and just going off like me and I are going off to read yeah. the papers. <laughs> All it is is that you just want... You, you know something? It's a perfect start. They had a really good pre-season and they had some games which could have been very tricky, like it was last season, but obviously the new signings have helped. But the mentality of the, of the team has totally changed. Um, going into the Palace game, first game of the season, could have been a tough one. But in the end, they, they came through that, you know, and, they, and they've won the, the first three games. And it's just exciting because there's a lot of work that's gone on behind, um, behind the scenes for Arsenal to get them to this point. And it's, 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 I don't think it's a bad thing for Arsenal fans to feel good about what's going on at the moment, but without getting carried away. It's, it's fantastic. If we don't police excitement, we're, we're all no, for being no, no, positive no, no, no. around it's here. Nice. Everybody knows, you know, everybody knows how happy I am when it's going well because we've had a few years where it's not. You have to sit there listening to people talking about mentality and owners and recruitment and all sorts of stuff. And they seem to be getting it right and it's, it's gelling at the moment, but it's three games in. It's three games. But in. you also mentioned mentality. That's what Aaron Ramsdale was talking about. Mm. He said it's, it's been a huge transformation on that side of things. I just wonder, because we were talking about Casemiro coming into Man United yeah. and what that can bring, not just in footballing terms, but in terms of his personality yeah. and how much he drives other players on. And they've done that with two multiple title winners, in Zinchenko and Jesus yes. at Arsenal. And I wonder how much of an impact that has had. Well, the thing is, it's the mentality of the manager as well. And then he's brought in players in in these kind of image in respects of the focus of these players and the meticulous way in how hard they train and, and the fact that they are multiple winners. That is going to change any dressing room, especially a dressing room like Arsenal's, where it's got young players in it who are very impressionable. You want to you want to have someone like Jesus and look how he plays, look at Zinchenko, how he plays, how they prepare, what they're doing. You know, we know um, with, with, uh, with Mikel how intense he is about everything and that, like I've mentioned, meticulous with the with the with the preparation. I watched them in the in the in the preseason and they were working on stuff. What I saw in the Bournemouth game in the pressing. And if you sit off them, they're going to hurt you. So it's at the moment, you know, it's um, it's very very exciting. But like I say, um, it's very early. But, like, there's a lot going on there that um, I'm really happy to see. Yeah, there's a lot for Arsenal fans to enjoy at the moment. And it comes back to the, the point that you were making earlier, Darren, which I cannot for the life of me remember what I was going <laughs> to say. It, come, it comes back to the, to the point that you were making about Arsenal, about that kind of the sort of flakiness that was there, that when you look at them now, doesn't, doesn't seem to be there. Well, and, the, and look, yes, three games, mm. but... It's all we've got to work on. Well, the thing is, everyone points to those three games and they also point to the fact that it's only Bournemouth with, with respect to them. But last season, you lost to Palace. Mm -hmm. Last season, you lost to Burnley. Last season, you lost to Brentford in the opening game. This is the kind of game you'd have dropped points in last season. Yeah. Whereas when you look at the team now, there's cohesion, there's work rate, the basics are being done and the attitude of the team is so unified, there is that cutting edge up front that I don't think you've had for many years, mm -hmm. actually. Even though you've had the likes of Lacazette and Aubameyang, you, you align Jesus' work rate with his cutting edge yeah. in front of goal and his willingness to set up other players, and you have a, a real package there. And I think the only thing you would need to go, take the next step after you get into the top four, assuming you do, Thanks would well. be more depth in those advanced yeah. areas. But this is a young team really benefiting from a, 
some joined up thinking at the club. Uh, and just as a nod to the, the, the documentary that's out at the moment, it's so important because it contextualises where you are now, the difficulties emotionally, psychologically that the club have had, the big decisions that they've had to make. Uh, we saw Josh Cronkey come to the yeah. training ground and support the manager when us guys were judging him fairly harshly mm -hmm. in the press. And also Edu Gaspar, we saw the whiteboard with all of the players they wanted to sign and the reason, the reasoning behind targeting those players. You see the method in the madness, if yeah. you like. And that's why I think the documentary is important for us to understand that this hasn't just ha happened exactly. overnight. Yeah. It's been really, really hard work, but Arsenal are reaping the I benefits. what's now. good about that as well, Dad, you make a great point about the documentary. What The work that goes in, because we've seen, we, we spoke about Man United and we've seen where Man United are now. Arsenal are in a similar position a few years ago, and so it has to start somewhere. And that is what is good to see the way it had to start. We've got that a young manager, young managerial team around him, and they've put the work in to get to where Arsenal are now. It's not easy. It's and not, not just easy. happening at the manager level, because so often we hear people asking for the manager to be given time, but it doesn't matter how much time you give the manager if the structure isn't there mm. behind him. I think they deserve a lot of credit, Mikael and Edu. You know, I just think that the job that they've done, getting rid of a lot of players, personalities that didn't fit with the new concept. I think they've added winners in Zinchenko and Jesus. But I just think they've, they deserve a lot of praise. They're playing good football. They have a, good, a great young manager. I think their scouting has been very good. Um, and if you look at, they've got, you know, Martinelli and Udegaard. Before, I mean, Saka was amazing. You're watching Saka and he was like a one-man band. Him mm. and Smith Rowe trying to carry that yeah. an iconic, mm. you know, Arsenal brand. And all of a sudden now you've got Udegaard and then you've got Martinelli is absolutely flying. Uh, Jesus is, you know, is a fabulous player. So you've got all these weapons at Mikel's disposal. Uh, and I just think they're, they're a threat. I mean, that is the blueprint. If I'm Man United, that's my blueprint right now. That's what, that's what we should build on. Young, exciting players. It's going to take a bit of time, but I think they're, they probably should have been in the Champions League if you didn't fall out at the end of the season last year. But I think they're doing an, an amazing job and Arsenal fans deserve it. You know, it's been a tough few years. And it's a, there are parallels as well, because obviously with Man United, there, was, there is a big decision to make over Ronaldo. Well, there was over Aubameyang yeah. and the manager made it. And some people disagreed. Some, and there was huge pressure because, yeah. as we know, and I said when I was on the show at the time, when you make a decision like that, you have to win. You have to achieve your objectives, and he didn't. And it was difficult for him, but the club stayed by him. Yeah. I think at United, Ronaldo, everyone feels that as good a player as he is, he should not be there if you're trying to build a team for the future. Arsenal wanted to build a team for the future, so they got rid of him and several other older senior players who perhaps were living on their past glories. Mm -hmm. Now this team is younger, more exciting, more vibrant, and you can see this team growing as a unit over the next two, three seasons. And if there's a player that sums that up, potentially it's Saliba, who went out on loan and everybody <clears> wondered, why have Arsenal brought in this player? They spent a lot of money on him and they're not playing and they don't seem to want him. What they were doing was waiting for him to, to reach the right level of, of ability for the Premier League. Unbelievable management of a, a young player, similar to, I'd say, Manchester City's with Phil Foden and the way they just... They didn't let him actually go out, they, they, but they wouldn't let him go out on loan, but they just kept him with the players he was training with and obviously got better, but they let this guy go out on loan a few times, made sure that they signed him to, to, to contracts and kept him going. And even when last season, um, there was people talking about... Look at Zinchenko here, look. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Even when um, they let him go out again last season, people saying, we should bring him back, we should bring him back. But what's happened is they loaned him out, he's gone away, he's become a French international playing with unbelievable players, and he's come back and he's had three games. And yes, you know, we respect he's got great pace, he's got, you know, great awareness, you know, great composure. Now we've seen his great finish. Um, but he's come back as like almost like the finished article at 21. And now you're just hoping that Again, it's very early doors, but everything you've seen and the signs from him up to this point, even his fantastic song he's got now, yes. <laughs> it's been really perfect. It's been, it's been perfect. So you're just hoping that it can continue. Yeah, it, I mean, he is a player who is benefited hugely from the, pa from the patience, from the long-term vision at Arsenal. Well, I bet he didn't like it, you know, yeah. when he kept getting sent out on loan for a couple of years. You know, as an outsider, you look and think, you spent 30 mil on somebody mm. and he hasn't played for three years. And remember, Fofana came from Leicester at the same time. They both yeah. played together. And um, they let, he came to Fofana, played straight away. Yeah. 
Yeah, I stuff. mean, it was, but, but obviously you can see now he's, he's ready, you know, mm -hmm. and I think he probably just wanted a chance. Uh, Arsenal probably weren't in that space where they probably could play him. And maybe Mikel thought he was going to make mistakes. But you think about it with Ben White mm -hmm. uh, and obviously with Ramsdale, you know, and Gabriel, there's, the, there's a base there which they can build upon. Interestingly, I think, you know, for Mikel and Edu, two central midfield players, good central midfield players, I'd say probably the weakest part of that team right now is probably there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably where they got really good pieces of the puzzle. I think you could invest big on a guy there to carry you to take the next step. I think they're really close. But maybe one guy that can make a difference in that is, is that central midfield position. And those two are going to know that better than anyone. Yeah, and they'll be looking for consistency across the, the whole of the mm. season. Plus, as you say, keeping everybody fit and maybe tweaking come the end of the season, depending on what happens. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.